All right, guys, so here we go again. I'm going to just work on finish out, finishing out the uh, the uh, preform that we had going here. And truthfully, I don't even know what, uh, what I'm going to do with it as far as a, a finished uh, point is concerned. So when we left, I had straightened up the edges here. So we got a little bit of a uh, work surface to go with. Um, kind of see the thickness for the width. And so we got some thinning work to do uh, in addition to some shaping work. And unfortunately, did not dress my materials like I had prior to the video before. Do a little bit of that here. Try and get ourselves set up here to do some more removal. So, it took me a long time to understand that the uh, removal process really needed to start near the edges. Uh, that if you went to the middle of your work you could run into problems as far as uh, trying to remove all the mass there toward the middle and end up snapping your point in half. It took me a long time to learn that. You'll see that flake actually ran past the center line and that's generally speaking what we're trying to do during the thinning phase of things. So at this point I'm just trying to uh, work with some of the platforms that I have at my disposal and thin this piece out. Uh, still have some opportunities as far as getting some good platforms. So I'm continuing to work through that. I really got a bit of a some mass running right in the center of this thing. And I tend to do that when I'm doing points. Have uh, get that just that that real center, the center area. Get just a little, a little more mass in here than I would like. Um, hopefully I'm hitting the camera okay. So I've been kind of working off of this edge here. I'm going to try and move in from this side to take this out here. That was pretty good. That actually overshot and took out the back side here. So you can see that it looks like it chunked out, ran clear across and knock that out. Sometimes it can be a little too effective. Ugh. Dug into that one a little deep. So here we are with the real, real deep Hinge. That particular flake spread out pretty far. And again, just a little past center line and and this is where all that mess was hanging out. So really that one flake took out a lot of the a lot of the issues that we were dealing with. as a result of some of the other uh, issues that I had created. And over here I'm just going to try and create something of a platform with a real steep edge so I knock off a pretty steep, man, it just doesn't want to go.
There we are. Uh, chance to try and work across all that so you can see how that just kind of feathers into the previous removal. Now for those of you that know what you're doing, you would see that I'm starting to get really thin right through the center. And so now I'm playing with fire as far as snapping this thing right in half. Uh, so we need to take some take some flakes from the extremities of the point here. Give ourselves the opportunity to continue working without losing the piece altogether. Things starting to get a little misshapen because of what I'm my uh, desire to thin out my far edges. So the beauty of it is though that everything eventually comes back. I'm trying to decide here if I want to work off into here and take out this mass or if I'm going to be better off trying to work on this. And obviously from a thickness standpoint it looks like this is where I need to go. I'm not entirely sure yet. Since that's the case I think I'm going to start working on this back end and take some mass off of there start working my way back up and see which direction is going to be best for best for me to work Oof. that was not a good strike all right guys so we're going to try and go in from the end this is always this is always a tricky deal right here Took a couple flakes there. This is kind of tricky because the platform I'm working that you're looking at is real steep. It's probably to my advantage that it's not breaking free. Uh, we'll try and get a little better entry point here. So now it's got a hard to tell but it's got a much more amenable angle there to try and work out this mass right there. Give ourselves a little abrasion. There we go. So you can see everything that came off there. A lot of mass taken off here. Something that took me a little while to learn is this real jagged edge is actually a desirable thing to have because it gives you these ridges to work with where uh, when I first started I was trying to keep it as straight as possible. Um, that is not the optimal uh, in hindsight. So this gives me the chance to take out this hump right here and kind of get things evened up. So you'll see here just a, enough to really I don't want to come off. Let's see here. Huh. There we go. So that flake went just past the center line. So we're we're doing a lot of work here getting into the into the middle of the rock. Or the middle of the preform rather. We're still dealing with a little bit of chunkiness here at the at the butt end, so we need to work that out before we get too thin down the line and try and work this and snap something off on the far end.
little bit of a hinge working right there, which I'll be able to take off with a flake coming in that direction later on. The idea here is to really, when you start seeing some of that occur, is to have patience and take it when it's ready to be taken. So here we go. There's a lot of a lot of extra there, and if you'll notice, it actually ran all the way across and took out that hinge that I was talking about. So you don't have to be in a hurry to take those things out, knowing that it's going to, uh, it's just going to take care of itself as a matter of course. So we're very quickly coming upon our just about our finished width and thickness here to give myself a little bit of little bit of space with which to work the uh, the edge because once you start doing the pressure flaking and all the final edge addressing uh, we tend to uh, like to go over and over and over it to the point where uh, you know every time you go every time you take a pass you make your, your point just that much thinner and when we're trying to preserve as much length and thickness as we can get we gotta move on to the next stage quickly I'm gonna try and build myself a opportunity here to try and take out this, this mass right in here. We're just, we're, we're just still real thick down at the butt end which can make notching a, a chore uh, if not impossible. There we go. There's a little bit of an entry point right there. Mm. Right. There we go. And every time I take the abrader to it, I'm losing length. And that's what we want to try and avoid. Alright, that was a good that was a good flake right there. It ran it ran well up into the You can see this guy's trying to hang on just a little bit right here. Just needs to let go. There we are. So, so we've got good taper on the uh, tail end as well as the front. That's what we're looking for. And try and work some of that off the. Took some off of here. I'm going to try and get some this direction as well. Here we are. This is uh, really kind of your final preform, so to speak. We're a little, 
we're not quite symmetrical up to the tip here. So we'll do a little bit of work on that. As we work to finish it out. So here we go. Do a little bit of abrasion slash grinding. Got ourselves here. And while I'm tempted to take after this again with some indirect, I think I'm going to move on to uh, pressure because this is the part where I break them almost every time. So we'll see what we can do here to arrive at a finished product before before I ruin it. And I think I'm struggling to get my flakes to travel to the midway line here. So they're just barely making it to the to the midway. And I'm still I still got this big hinge here to contend with. As a matter of fact, I think I do a little bit of work with it right there. I find it rather interesting how these things can come out so symmetrical just based on uh, eyeballing them. In a world and time of being so precise with measuring devices and etc. that this can occur almost innately. So this is probably going to be just a, another one or two passes really to get this accomplished. Dad. I am shooting a video. Oh. <laughs> My youngest daughter. So we're still a little zigzaggy here. This is about the part where that begins to disappear. So you can see, I don't know, in the light where this is where we ran our last course of pressure flakes because they're very regimented whereas on this side the flake scars are pretty bold and across the whole piece I'm still contending with this little piece right here we'll see if we can't work through that
Here we are, pretty much at our conclusion. Uh, at this point, we'll go through and do some notching. Gosh, we're gonna break this thing at this rate. All right, that really kind of took out some mass that I needed to take out. This should take out some more that I need to get rid of. Yeah, here we go. So kind of thinning that, that bottom edge there. And I'm braiding very lightly because actually I'm just trying to shape it. Go with a pretty light abrader here, or a pretty fine abrader rather, just to get us straightened out once and for all. through and sharpen this this guy at this point um, and actually I'm trying to run a course from back to front on one side and really just kind of taking out any uh, dull spot that I can recognize on the edge and it's pretty important that when you do this there's no crushing you don't want to hear it crush you want to hear it snap off and go back along the same line and do the same thing running in the opposite direction so you're just kind of stitching the edge and you're working all of your dull spots to create a very sharp edge. And so, I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up in the video, but this edge is quite sharp and serrated where this edge is still waiting to be sharpened. So this is, this is the edge we're looking for right here. Uh, which, upon entry on the tip of an arrow, let's see, I'm, I'm not entirely sure where I'm at in the video or on the screen, but this edge is devastating upon entry at the tip of an arrow as opposed to something like this, which is mediocre at best. And so, uh, that's that's my process for sharpening a uh, blade, which I know for me took a lot of time, effort, and experimentation. Uh, really just looking to a lot of 
different people for information as far as how to do it. Uh, so, I mean, if this is helpful in any way, then great, because that's really my purpose in doing this work is to try and help fill in any gaps that I was missing because there's so much information out there you know let's start with being careful oh yeah there you go all right that's a copper tool for you secondarily would be steel so here's my backup sharpening tool. It's a uh, horseshoe nail. And I think you can even pick up on where the copper ends and the steel begins. And so from this point, you know, we, we either put a, a tanged end on here Put a couple of uh, uh, notches in there. However, we decide that we want to we want to finish this point up. And my top is actually popping off of this tool. Got to set it again. So, you know, if you plan on notching, kind of go in at the corners. However, it is you decide to notch it. Uh, typically, I'll just go in at the where it changes to and even a uh, even the steel will bend, as you can see, as I'm trying to do this. evidenced by the original start of the last video. This is raw material. Um, if it were um, heat treated, this process would probably be a lot easier. But as it turns out, I'm working just with a raw piece because I felt that it really kind of told the story start to finish here. And here we go again. My tool keeps coming apart. Let me put that, I just need to set it again. We'll start on this next edge here. this is where my commentary about uh, symmetry in proportion goes out the window because I've always struggled to get my notches to match up exactly so bear with me if this is the part where the point gets all janky and messed up as my kids would call it. I really got to figure out a better way to mount these At this point, I'm just trying to square things up as best I can. Get these 
two edges to match. just to go knock off all the deltas is the way I've described heard it described and my humble opinion is that you do this from front to back believing that any dull edges that you leave are going to be on the back side of your your work. Trying to hurry, guys. I know this video is getting long. All right. Oh, man, that tip. Little bits of work to be done down here on the on the stem, but ultimately that's just busy work. So here we go. Give it a little bit of sweat off the brow there. point yeah you can work on that but ultimately not bad so there you have it